Uh, you. <sighs> Come in on Sunday? Mm. Tomorrow. Mm. All right, so That's we're going to do the, uh, the whole 10 seconds of silence, and then I, uh, we can cue you to start, okay? All right. Uh, I copy on that. Thank you so much for your patience. <laughs> Is this one? Oh, ten seconds of bro. Get out. Go in the living room. What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Welcome back to another episode of Cats and Dogs, the Good, Bad, and Ugly. I am your whole host, Lawrence, a.k.a. Mr. Hit it with the wee-wee. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, Shit today. Is problematic as fuck. <laughs> unfortunately, <laughs> today, my co-host, the lovely Tatiana Taylor, couldn't make it today. But, uh, you know, I brought back up today. Uh <laughs> um, you know, she did such an amazing job. Uh, she was the star last week. Everybody, Not a star. Everybody Somebody loved. Lie. Everybody loved to hear some insight about her. Yeah, I got backlash you got, on oh, that episode. Oh, so you know, she did so nice. Had to bring her back <laughs> twice. People uh, was in their whole feelings. They whole whole feelings. Like, why you never told me that? What do you be like? Uh, you don't need an ask. From from the Job of Tears podcast, the living legend herself, Janelle from HR. I am a ghost. Oh. Once again, Janelle. Uh, shout out to our wonderful engineer Joy. Round of applause. And also, make we have some. Uh, oh, she's spicy this morning. Oh, oh also, oh, oh. also, we have a great, amazing guest. It, it took me uh, uh, to talk about this topic for her to get on. You know how long I was trying to get this person on this. Well, podcast? it gotta make sense. If it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. If it don't make, but I, I've been trying to get her on for a long time. You know, she was so inspired by your episode last week that she was like, "I jump on for the part two. So I had to get her in here. The lovely, amazing, beautiful Alexandria. Oh, I didn't even Hi, get, everybody. I didn't it's even nice to be that, here. That of a, do you want like a nickname or like do you want to like <laughs> stick to? Alexandria, do you want to stick to Brett? Like, do you I mean, you call me Brett, so Brett's good. <laughs> but I'm not the only one at the table. <laughs> um, I mean, I, I feel like we'll have a we'll have a nickname for you some somehow before this episode is out. Oh dear God, that uh-huh. sound, that's sus as hell. <laughs> that sounds scary. What did I sign up for? Yeah, you already absolutely know. not. <laughs> I will get off this whole mic <laughs> right now. Hey. Hey, sit down. Um, <laughs> I'm already so seated. wait. Can we just confirm in this moment, like when he says he doesn't have two voices, that's the other voice everybody's asking about. What other voice? This is the same voice that but, I uh, have. First of all, that's like two octaves higher <laughs> than what you just gave us. <laughs> Thank because, you. Because everybody swears that, uh, that to her, you know, I have a different voice on this podcast. I speak the same as I do normally. Definitely just put Matt Bass in your voice for that last sentence. You know, because okay. I want to sound serious. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't know Facts. what the fuck you talk about, but um, oh word, no idea. But I appreciate you guys for being here, Janelle. Thank you for coming back, Alexandria. Thank you for being on the episode. Uh, it's her first time ever. She hasn't even I been know, on my, never done a my podcast. podcast. It's crazy. <laughs> word, right? Let's go. <laughs> Um, All right, don't come for my best friend like that. Okay, <laughs> relax. Guess what? It's still under the Jabba Tears Podcast Network. So, right, take, take it easy. Just like that. Um, so. Speaking of the Jabba Tears um, Network, I had time to think. So on Cats and Dogs, we made history. We had everybody from the actual Jabba Tears Podcast. Oh, that's dope. <laughs> I was the last. Yeah, so we I saved the, the best last. for last. Because you know, Yachty um, was first with his uh, depression episode. Then we had Wilkins up here with his what big, was he talking about? big dick energy and a whole bunch of other stuff. But shout out to my brother, Sapase. <laughs> <laughs> Sapase. Uh, first of all, the both of them are Haitian. So, <laughs> so I mean, they're brothers. Um, and then we got you and here with the, the we got we got you. 
Uh-oh. Oh, so you're going <laughs> to sing. But when I asked, are you going to sing on the episode? No, I'm not doing none of that. My voice is Guess crap. what? You just got it. So stay blessed. Hey, hey. She dropping the album coming 2020. I'm, absolutely not. <laughs> Look out for Tati's album, though. <laughs> She'll be uh, talking to you guys in her monotone voice. And y'all enjoy that. <laughs> so Alexandria, you know, we, we touched with Janelle last episode. Um, I want to get into it because I don't want to waste any time. So if you can... Please just give us like a little background story on you and uh, cause we're doing this part two of uh, relationships with fathers and everything like that. Yeah, so um, my parents were married. They got married before I was born. Uh, and my dad is what you like to call a rolling stone. And so he is on wife number four, possibly five, that we know about. <laughs> Yo, and, Janelle's face is crazy. Uh, so when I was about four years old, he was not completely divorced from my mom but also got remarried to my second stepmother so you know that's how that went um so then my mom got remarried so technically i have two dads because my stepdad which i don't call him that i call him my father he has raised me since um basically since they met but really once they got married when i was five he has been in my life consistent he you know i have a huge family because he had kids my mom had kids but um you know he just took care of me he treated me like his own he's never treated me like anything different um he was a hard-working man he worked two jobs so he wasn't necessarily in the household all the time but if i ever needed anything or if i needed to be protected he was there uh but i was a daddy's girl uh my original dad we share a lot of the same interests and i was very much his daughter and loved to do things with him so you know when he started to fall back and fall out of my life it was very hard for me to deal with because as great as my other dad is you know like I said he worked two jobs the man left the house at five in the morning didn't get home till midnight so if you caught him on a weekend and he wasn't asleep great time but other than that you know you really didn't see him and my dad my birth dad was the guy that you know I did the movies with. He was the one who gave me my love of books. He sings. That's actually where I get it from. So all of those things that we have in common, I look just like him. Uh, So, you know, it makes you very close to someone. And so when they choose to not show up for your graduations, your birthdays, or call you on your birthday to remind you to call your brother on his, but don't say happy birthday or get married on your birthday, it kind of creates a, a different sort of space. And, you know, my mom raised me to never disrespect him, but we uh, we don't have the same relationship anymore. So I think my perspective is very different because I do have a present dad, but I have a dad who also has disappointed me pretty much my whole life. So, Janelle. Yeah. Uh, I know you I probably, can piggyback uh, off of that. <laughs> you've heard this story before. like what, what I mean, I've heard stories. I, you know, I've lived with it, you know, just for those that are listening and viewing um, me. And um, I call it Brittany because this is Brit to me. Because exactly. uh, you say Alexandria. First of all, that's mad syllables. <laughs> Second of all, it's mad breath. Like. <laughs> but um, background story, um, me and Brit. Brit's one of my best friends. Uh, we've been best friends practically half our lives, um, well over 15 years. Um, so I've, you know, lived it, seen it. We both lived and seen, um, experiences with our fathers, um, you know, since prior to Asia, like 15, 16. So, um, I understand a lot of who she is because of her experiences, um, which is why I'm beyond proud that she's able to come and speak about it because I think you get into a space, like I said, the older you get, the more, you know, wiser, the more you understand things that you can honestly have conversations like this. Like, I think if it was even like, and we both can attest to this, like even within our own friendship, um, certain things that we, you know, when we were younger, we withheld and we, we didn't say oh, yeah. because, you know, you don't want nobody to worry about you or you don't want a judgment or you, you, you just not in that mature enough space to have those conversations. But, once again, you know, through the power of friendship, the power of positivity, hashtag new day. Um, <laughs> we've been able to overcome those situations where, you know, we're basically in a phase of our lives um, where we're an open book and we understand, you know, there's highs, there's lows. Um, but when, no matter what, we're always there for each other because, you know, we're sisters. So I definitely understand her experiences and, and can relate to in more ways than one. So um, just hearing that, like, what was your first reaction? Like, you have... Oh, Janelle has one dad. You know, they don't have the best relationship. I have no dad. I've never met this man a day in my life. I don't... I've never seen a picture. Uh, 
I never got a phone call. I don't know where he went. I don't know if he went to go get milk and just didn't come back. He playing hide and go seek, and I just ain't find him yet. And stuff. Yo, like what that. if he was like down the block from you? Like Marco Polo. Polo. What if he was in my building? That'd be. Some that's shit. what I'm saying. That's like, crazy. But I hope that's not true. I just don't. I don't know. Like okay. right at at the age I am now, it's just like, like I like you wasn't here, so. Um, my mom, my mom wasn't the type to be like, you know, if you want to see a kid, like, you can't, like, nah, fuck out of here. So he, I'm pretty sure, like, if he wanted to, he could have had the chance to come and see me and do all of that. So he didn't do that, right? But like I told you, I ch- like I like last episode, I challenge you to understand, like, there once again are both sides of the story. Like, three. you may not always three, their side, her side, truth, but. I challenge in a sense, like, what if, you know, certain things had happened that prevented him? Not saying, like, once again, for your kids, I, I'm a firm believer you move mountains for them. Like, don't don't give the, you know, the, you know, I didn't have no job, I, you know, I moved. Like, those type of obstacles you can overcome it at should any have time. Been, I felt like it should have been some, it could have been some type of communication. Like, you don't have no money. You could have picked me up. Could have, you could have went to your house and watched TV and had a conversation. Like, it would have been something. Like, um... Uh, No, I think that's very true, but I think that, like, just for your closure, for the sake of you, you know, even just knowing who he is might be something that can give you some sort of closure on, okay, I know who this person is, I know what he did with his life, and maybe even a conversation where he answers those questions. Nigga, where were you? The hell were you doing? I maybe wouldn't phrase them that way, but that's that's your prerogative. You know? <laughs> how I shot a basketball. You, you know how I got my first girlfriend? Is he quoting movie lines right now? I had now to do this myself. Nah, like, this is action. You, you know, know this would be stuff that I would... <laughs> shoot in the club. <laughs> 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 I don't do that. I'm sorry. You did do it. Uh, we not you have a whole child. <laughs> you did do it. <laughs> it. It wasn't It wasn't on purpose. Um, <laughs> but... <laughs> She anyway, <laughs> that's a whole different episode. Yeah, I feel that's like. another episode. You should definitely do an episode shoot up the club. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a hit, <laughs> low key. The nigga shoot up your club before. Do what? Does it look like a nigga that shot up my Listen, club? They got, like, they got, they got plenty of pills for that. Nah, I don't even take pills hey, when I'm sick. How you doing? <laughs> huh? And I got my best friend next to me. I don't even take pills when I'm sick. Uh, she don't be y'all when I have my like, surgery. Y'all see me just over here because you may not be watching the video, but I'm just staying in my corner because <laughs> this. Because he trying, he trying me right now. It's too early in the morning. He trying me. Like, you ain't get your endless mimosa. All right, but then we then we no. talk about this. Don't be coming for my best friend like hey, that. Hey, listen, don't I'm be, coming all episode. Don't be coming but for pause. my best friend like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Pause. Hashtag right. management, and I don't hey, even work here. Here we go. We got the nasty minds already, but um, in a, in a sense of, <laughs> in a sense of <laughs> Alexandria, you had two fathers. Mm-hmm. So, how how did like when that first started to like manifest in your life? Like, how did that like how did you feel? Like, how how did that work? Like, you didn't feel like a type of way. Like, it was like you know, uh, ah, it's at the tip of my tongue. Huh? Um, like, what angry or? Like confused. confused and stuff like that. Like, I don't think I was confused. I definitely. So my dad is a Taurus. I'm an Aries. Um, so we're both. My uh, mom's a Taurus. Hard headed, and we butted heads when I was. You a said kid. you hard headed. We when I was. A kid. What we not gonna do on this episode? <laughs> right. It's coming. It's to me. I, I was asking a question, but okay, you know, I'm sorry. Continue. Either way, um, I said we're both hard headed, as in the signs: a ram oh. and a bull are those signs. Um, so we butted heads when I was a kid, you know, like I, like I said, I was a daddy's girl from jump, like spend time with my dad, like would sit on the couch and watch movies with my like birth dad. So like I was a daddy's girl. So this new guy, no matter how cool he was, no matter how much I was mad at my dad for, you know, leaving my mom and like, I was very aware of what was happening. Like he, when I tell you this guy is shady, he definitely took me to the park to meet my stepmother when he was still married to my mom to like date her so there Wait, was this a, your stepfather no my no, dad. dad so like my dad and my mom are still married i'm wife years number old. two my wife keep number up two. yeah my, so my mom was wife number two my dad got married when he was a teenager went into the military then got divorced um oh, and, so this is wife number three. Oh, sorry oh, so oh. met my mom like a couple years after he got divorced a couple years after they met they got married had me And I'm now four years old. They're, you know, going through things as you do in marriage. But my dad decides to step out on the marriage. And the person that he chose to step out with, he would, like, take me on play dates. 
like, oh, I'm taking Britt to the park, whatever. And while I'm at the park, he would meet her there while he was still married to my dad. Oh, so he already knew what it was. He was like, I can't bring her to the crib. So how oh, get my up? mother would have definitely, like, nah, he ain't how that crazy. mama would have. I mean, Look, Nad- Nadine has saved and Holy Ghost Unsolved mysteries would have went down. But they wouldn't have found that body. He First unsolved, unsolved, nah, unsolved no, unsolved mysteries no. would have occurred. <laughs> No, he I know her it. mama. He wouldn't have made it. That my mama happened. wouldn't even had to. My grandmother, she's from New Orleans. They do stuff different down there. Like that man, he would have never. They wouldn't know what happened to him at all. But so either crazy. way, so you know, he like I knew exactly what was going on. So I was angry with him, but I was still a daddy's girl. So like this new guy that my mom is now dating and getting engaged to, and then marries. Like we had our ups and downs, and like we used to go at it. But I think you know, as you went at it with the new guy? With my with my dad, my second dad. You're not my dad. You're not my real daddy. I actually said that to him do. once. I actually Don't said that me. to him once. <laughs> and, me. like, we, when I say we went at it, like, that first, I would say the first year to two years, we definitely went at it. And then, but in that first year to two years, he was consistent. How old were you when you? When they got married, I was five. And you was going down there with him at five years old. I, I tell you, I was super intelligent. Power, power the uh, the smart kid. You my mom, it. yeah, my mom. I'm gonna give me an extra cookie, and you ain't gonna tell me what to no, do because you ain't my dad. It wasn't stuff like that. It was like, I it was like that. you know, he would be like, <laughs> clean your room up, and I'd be like, I I'm, I am gonna clean it, but mom told me I could clean it at this time. Well, I'm telling you to clean it now. Well, mom said I could clean it at this time, and you're not my dad, so I'm not cleaning it right now. <laughs> like it was those kinds of conversations. It wasn't like you told me to eat something or whatever, but it was just like. I, and it usually happened because my dad said he was going to pick me up. My my birth dad and said he was going to pick me up. I There was one specific time I literally would. I fell asleep in the window. I would not move because he promised he was coming to get me. So I was going to wait for him. Midnight comes. My mom and my stepdad had actually went away for the weekend to the Poconos and had to come back and pick me up from my mom's friend's house because he never came. And then that following day, my dad, second dad, is home with me telling me to clean my room, and I'm telling him he's not my dad. It wasn't really about him. It was about being a kid and, like, having to switch roles of, like, this dad that I used to love who no longer, not used to because I still love him, but who I was, like, he was the greatest thing ever in my mind is now becoming the not-so-greatest thing, and this new guy is consistent, like, he shows up to my graduations. He shows up to my recitals. He'll He's not there on the day-to-day, but he takes time off of work for that. He plans vacations with us, and he takes time to get to know my older brother, who happens to be my biological dad's son, not my mother's son, but who she has such a good relationship with him and his mom that we vacation together, and now they hang out together. So it starts to make this new family unit that... You can't help but accept. No matter how old you are, you you kind of fall into. So then it creates a space with my biological dad, and he had the nerve to get jealous. <laughs> I mean, that's not. Kind of <laughs> it's like you don't show not up, surprised. but you're still mad. <laughs> not surprised at all. So, you know, it's so funny though. You mentioned that you you said you and your dad you, um, was at Aries on Taurus. Me and my dad are the same sign. Ooh, <laughs> that's even worse. Me and my dad are um, actually my dad and. Um, Brandy have the same birthday. Or well, Brandy, I think it's the day after. But my dad, me and my dad are like two weeks apart. So my dad's an August Virgo and I'm a September Virgo. Um, my dad's, my birth dad is an August yeah. Virgo. It's something about them Virgos, male. They be a. Ugh, the male Virgos is Baby out of control. Out these streets. But August, my younger brother, September, he's great. Shout out to him. <laughs> Shout out to Christian. Um, but I just find it interesting because um, lo- I was always, un- unlike Brett, I was always. Not saying she's not a mama's girl either, because her and her mama like thick yeah, as thieves. Super tight. Um, but Can't growing up for she's me, I was it. she probably will never know because Nadine be out here in the streets. She do. Um, Stay careful. But I was more of a mama's little girl. Like me and my mom were always. Oh, yeah. We were Velcro. Um, so really, the way I always looked at my dad was like, "You interrupting our shit." Like, <laughs> <laughs> like she's like, not lying. Fuck is you here for? Like, like what are you doing? Serious. Ain't no football on TV to go watch or some shit. Like, no, I mean, you know, what's so funny. I actually didn't get into sports until old, like college, like because my ex was a sports manager in major, so like I would wake up and go to sleep to fucking ESPN. So I didn't really get into sports until older. Um, but no, growing up, it was always like, "You are an inconvenience." Like, what are you doing here? And it was more, but. I always say people always look at me like, oh, this little girl disrespectful. But it was just like, but he didn't do you didn't you didn't step up and you didn't show the type of 
um, discipline and, and encouragement as a kid growing up because, like, low key, like, my dad, like, you know, growing up now, everybody be like, oh, you know, you thick, you this, you that, blah, blah, blah. Wait, they say you what? That, you know, you thick, like, you know, you, you got a body, blah, 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 you know, type of shit. Yeah, you got jello back there. And you mind your business. <laughs> I was about to say, <laughs> like, go. Mind your business. <laughs> but, like, growing up, I don't think, um, I don't think men now understand, like, you know, the encouragement of a father is super duper mm-hmm. important and super duper. Um, it it plays a huge role as you are as an adult um, because, like, growing up, my dad used to always talk about my weight. Always talk about my weight. From I was a kid to I was a little, like, teenager all throughout my life. And mind you, he's, he's sticks and stones, like my brother. Them two are sticks and stones. But my mom... It was always, you know, the thicker one. So, of course, I get it from my mama. But growing up, like, always feel like I'm being downsized. I always feeling like someone's looking at me in a way um, that's supposed to be, like, encouraging and, 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 and protecting you. So you felt like he was basically putting you down because all the time, like it would be like, well, why are you eating that? Or, you know, you can lose some weight. And even as I got older and I was in a whole ass relationship will still pop shit off to the person I was with. Oh, so like, he would talk shit ways. about you to your to Yeah, thing. like, let me tell you, I'm going to tell you a crazy story. So, um, me and my ex, and Britt knows my ex-boyfriend um, for years and years and years. So, we would, uh, one day we had went out on, like, St. Mark's Place or whatever. We went to this, like, um, like burger spot. It's not there no more, unfortunately. It was a bomb-ass little, like, little bur- like slider-like sp- spot. That we used to go to all the time. Oh, so yeah. see, yeah, yeah. See, we used to go <laughs> all the time. Um, so me and him had went one day and you know had dinner, nothing crazy. Um, and literally, like day, like two days after that, my ex gets a mysterious email. Email, not even a text. Or email. Uh, it's a mysterious. It actually, it was like no, it was on oh, Facebook. I remember this. It was on Facebook. I was about to say it wasn't Facebook. Email. It wasn't email. It was Facebook Messenger. But that was back when your Facebook Messenger came as like a private message. Yeah. So like, but he the way he read it was in like the email because you get email alerts like when you get private messages. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. So my ex, I got a private message from lo and behold, my dad. On some like you need to leave her. She'll never lose weight. She's you know she's not the one for you. That's crazy. blah blah blah. Like it's crazy. Wow. Yo no, it's that it's crazy. And I only say I only really mention the story because like you don't understand like sometimes the the true struggle in you know in terms of growing up and in terms mm-hmm. of. Even though, like I always told you, even from the last episode, like having somebody there isn't always the best thing because it's not always the best person to encourage you or the best person to actually be around you. And it's not, once again, a disclaimer. It is not a shade to him. It is not, you know, I, I'm not saying here hating. I'm not saying here mad at him. No, more. Like, it's never about that. It's just that you have to understand, like, who the person is today is because of of what they've been through so like being with the person i was with he was like nah fuck that nigga you know he talking about like blah 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 like i mean even though we're not together no more but like that's you know low-key that's still the home yeah, he helped it down that's crazy and like, for for your own your own behind my back so it's it, and it was always like things that like that that was always done behind my back that why i don't i have a hard time trusting people because it's like those that are supposed to be like your blood and you're supposed to trust and you're supposed to depend on and you can't depend on them to be there for you in that time like this shit is crazy like you never want to be you know i was in my early 20s so i still you know had a lot of growing to do i still you yeah, know he was out here was, he was out here wilding whoa, I, well, I actually wasn't well i didn't i don't mean like that when you when you when you in your early 20s that's your time to have your fun but what's crazy was it was the opposite i wasn't because i was in a whole ass relationship how long was you in that relationship for? like six seven years <laughs> The, the, I'm gonna need Wallet. the peanut gallery to be Probably. quiet and stop talking about I my best friend. I mean, we're gonna talk about Wallet. I probably didn't wall out until after the fact. So, in my college, late in 20s, days. my college days, I didn't because he we went to school together. Best friend to best friend, you chill over there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my my other my other best friend is in the room, and he understands my struggle sometimes. But um, but yeah, but it goes back to once again, um, people that are there always isn't the best people to be there and no matter if it's blood or not blood 
Um, especially if somebody is supposed to be your first love and not being your first love, that that's a struggle that's in a itself. I, like I said last episode, when it comes to uh, girls, women, and all of that, like your father is supposed to be your first love as a man. Like he's your he's your most important relationship on how you see other men and how you pr- you know um, how you put yourself out there and everything like that. Because some women that. Uh, Never had a father figure, and they just all crazy out here in the world. And you'd be like, "Damn, where was they?" From? I mean, but then still, on the, in the second fold of it, like on the flip side, you have you have females that have had their dad, and their yeah. dad has been in in their life forever, and they still, and they still, still out here thotting and bopping. Yeah, you're right. So, like at the end of the day, it's not I think even it's about growth and like a choice. Like you know, like you have to at some point decide who you're going to be, despite what your dad or anyone else has what done what you've to been you through or what you've been through, right? Like. People have to choose a path. Like, things happen to everyone in life. And what happens after that is what you're responsible for. It's up to you. And I'm not going to sit here and woe is me all the time. No. But, like, those things of, like, when my dad would always talk about my weight, Mm -hmm. always talk about how I look, always talk. Or you carry it. Or, like, like that's, like, even to, like, present day, I don't really take compliments well at all. So when he, when he, when you were finding out that he was saying all of this and all of that, like, how did how did it make you feel? Like, what did did you tell your mom? Like, so yeah, my mom knew because she knew he ain't shit, so she knew what was up. Yeah. Um, but it makes you feel like you're never you're never gonna be good enough, mm-hmm. and and I think that's always the the cloud at times over my head. It's like, am I gonna be good enough? Like, if you sitting here telling the person I'm with, and at the time I thought I was gonna spend the rest of my life with that that I'm this and I'm that, it's like you trying to sabotage what I got going on. And therefore, so then when me and him decided to part ways, it, it was a whole domino effect. It was like, well, maybe this nigga's right. Maybe I'm not this. I'm not oh, yeah. that. So yeah, maybe the, you got the doubts just kicking in your head like, damn, maybe he was right about me. Yeah, it, com- it comes into play. But once again, as as Britt mentioned, it comes with it comes with greater growth and, and greater understanding who you are as a person. So now I don't I don't always see it that way. But like I said, I don't. I'm never one to take compliments well because of shit like that. Because I'd be like, nah, I don't believe you. Yeah, whatever. Nah, you yeah, just whatever. talking all that hot shit. Yeah, like you just trying to, you know, you trying to get them off hands or you trying to do something crazy. Like, I don't believe you. But like when a person really does show up and they're consistent, like Brit's um, second dad, her her, her dad, because that's dad I know. That is really. my dad. Whole dad. time he loves Janelle. He'd be like, he he'd be like oh, it went That's Janelle my guy. Coming. Like that's my, my birthday. Guy. Janelle was like, oh, I need a ride. He was like, we could stop and pick Janelle up. I was like, it that's, is my birthday. That's he was my like, guy. But Janelle needs a ride. <laughs> like, he loves Janelle. That's, that's his boo. That, that, yo, like, for real. That's, like, that's his boo. my guy. He's like, where's my other daughter? <laughs> Seriously, so, so this it's is always, not so the father good. that I met, right? This is no, a, it is. This is the dad oh. you met. That's it my dad. That's exactly. my dad. L- literally, this man, like, a <laughs> father. I met father and I met mother. Uh, mother brought off me the to, first, off the rip. Oh, he she helped brought, me. She brought me Hennessy. So the way we, she bought the household Hennessy. Yo, because I met Listen, she was like, "What you want to drink?" We gotta I tell this story Hennessy. right. I was moving back to New York. I lived in DC for five years with our other best friend. Hey, Joy, love you, love you, Jadaya. And uh, she had moved to Houston, got married, and then like, a couple years later, I was like, "You know what? I miss home. I'm moving back to New York." So I moved here, but I left my stuff in storage for like six to eight months. So then I was trying to move back, and I was like, "Yo, Janama, need some help." moving this stuff she out did. like none she of my said, brothers are gonna be here do you know some people like i'll pay them whatever girl i always know you know no people they be on her dm listen like, listen she, she listen if like, you come for my friend one more time on this podcast <laughs> were you in my dm i'm going I'll wait. to lose no it. exactly so what are you no. talking about no anyway i'm talking crazy on yo this. yo <laughs> let me see your instagram shit right now nah, it's you're like good, 12 bro. to 20 and they're like <laughs> just sitting here they wait let, let actually let's do the count today last episode we did a count actually i looked the other night and it was a smooth 30. Oh, I'm at six. I'm at two. I'm at six. It was a smooth 31. And I was, it's only I'm be- low key nervous about and it. But I don't check it ever. That's probably it, two years worth of messages. It's six now because people are so. When I posted um, a video um, last night of me watching the 94 uh, Rumble. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. People I was responding that. to that. So that's why I was responding to people. But other than that, you know. I was talking to Rolando about uh, which Rumble was that that they booed Roman and the Rock. Uh, it was Philly. Yeah, that's. I was talking to him about was that, that like just today. 2016, I think. That was 15. That was 15. Oh, see? Yeah. That shit was crazy. Oh, huh. But anyway. But yeah, so <laughs> Lawrence was one of the people that Janelle called to help me move. And obviously, my parents were there because they hadn't retired yet and moved. <laughs> You're so, welcome. <laughs> 
So he helped me move, <laughs> met my mom, met my dad. Welcome. And my mom, you know, at the end of the day, born and raised here, but we're Southern women. Our family's from New Orleans and from the Carolinas. So, you know, you're, hosp- you're hospitable. So she was like, what do you guys want to drink? Thank you for helping. Lauren said he wanted she Hennessy. Wanted Hennessy. Whole, Hennessy. So she, my mother bought, bought a whole it. Bottle of Hennessy. Like, she bought, she bought a, some food. Like she just wanted knowing. to say, you know, thank you. Yeah, because I was like, I want. I told you no before we got there. Like, and it's crazy. We were fat niggas that night because we dead ass ordered Domino's, waiting for you to come to New York so we can leave. So, and then in the sense of, I was like, when we get over there, we are gonna be in Harlem. This is known for soul food. I gotta have soul food. So you know, I was like, yeah, we could do that. Uh, uh, she got her little hookah and everything. Yo, we didn't get home until like, oh my god, the sun was coming six out. Six in the morning. Like six in the morning. Like we had we Amy help Ruse bread. Like we, yeah, we morning. shut down. That, but I shout out to Amy Ruth. I fucking love Amy Ruth on the weekend because they stay open. They late. stay open until like five o'clock in the morning, so you could get chicken and you can get chicken and waffles at three o'clock Why in the morning. Want chicken and waffles or That's steak? Shit. Yeah, because yo, we want. Up this That's exactly what I'm about to get, get for home. brunch though. Because it started off with just me and Q. Yeah. And Q left. Then we got Sean. Then Sean pulled up. Then after we Sean met up with Larry, Larry too. Larry, Larry came up town. Jaquan and whoever he was with. And then it was just like we we was all a big ass. I group. forgot Jay came he up. Did. He was with his homeboy. That's when he was. Nah, it was mad at us. Oh, it yeah. was mad at us. It really I was. Like, was. Shit. I was like, oh, good times. Hashtag you're welcome. <laughs> but oh, I beg you to differ. Lord help. me. Me. But, you know, I either way, like, so that was actually how I met this guy through my best friend and then met everyone else, like, that they all know and, you know, made them my family. You're welcome. Yeah. I'm just going to keep saying that. You're welcome. All right. So, I guess back to dads. Cause yeah. That um, got sidetracked. What other questions? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, I've met your dad uh, from that. But, from yeah, that like, night. and you wouldn't have known. He wasn't my dad. Yeah, because I mean, he was a dope. Oh, individual. biological dad. Yeah, oh, yeah. My, my biological dad, because he's definitely my dad. He's Actually, dad. in my phone, he saved as daddy. My uh, biological fa- father saved is saved as, as father. Um, like father, period. Yeah. That's what oh, mine says it's his whole name. I mean, my mother was always <laughs> one to like my know, mom is mommy. At the end of the day, mm-hmm. she was like, "You would that you wouldn't be here if he didn't name. exist." So disrespecting him was never something that she was allowed. And you know, after several years of therapy in my twenties, I could tell him to his face I was very angry with him. I paid a lot of money for that, so I like to say it sometimes. I was very a angry. Lot of money for that? Yeah, I paid yeah, for my is expensive therapy. Is expensive. You got, even if you got insurance, therapy is expensive. Listen, as my hell. family is that is an investment. Heavily involved okay. in the church. My grandmother was a minister. His mother was a minister so talking back to people like getting upset with my parents was not something that was allowed so until I was in my like mid to late 20s I really didn't have a voice with my parents if they did things that I didn't like I just ate it yeah, she, because yeah. that was how I was like raised my mom ain't so, that shit you getting beat with whatever she can put her hands on oh my mother is scary without hitting you like facts Nadine can just look at you and you be like alright wait mm-hmm. what did you ask me to do something did I miss it I'm so sorry can I do it for you now like she's just one of those people like now yeah. she's so saved that she you know Martin Luther King the uh-huh. Her energy, kids, her but energy shifts. But listen, like, Nadine, oh, if you hear this episode, I I appreciate you. So go. if you hear this episode, she and you he got appreciates some you because you birth <laughs> Alexandria. <laughs> no, Hashtag, you hear this stuff, you're welcome. If you hear this episode and you got questions for her and you want to hear her with something, listen, I ain't had nothing to do with this. I, I wow, 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 wow! A whole PSA for my mother who you met one time. Like listen, turn up. Wow. Yeah, she's a cool person. Yo, she is dope though. My because, mom is dope though. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. He went cool. to go introduce himself and he went to go give. And she, she was like, nah, baby, we from the south. We, we hug here. And then I was like, huh. Ah, All right, let's turn like, down because hey. we're talking about dads. Although, mom, I still love you. Happy belated birthday again. You're, you're enjoying it with the girls. You're welcome. <laughs> but, um, okay, so question, right? You had two fathers. Yeah. So in a sense of when you needed to talk about something that you felt was important, which one did you go to? I mean, I was still, like, I was daddy's girl, but I loved my mom. So, like, important things were usually my mom's territory and conversation. Um, if I felt like like something was wrong, like I was not in danger, but like I felt uncomfortable about like a guy I was talking to or something and I felt like he wasn't appropriate. Um, I low key wouldn't tell my dad as in my second dad because, you know, he's like a super nice man, but he's low key. He's a killer. I've heard stories. You know? Yeah. yeah so I like I, I, I would be more concerned about the person I was talking to. So I probably wouldn't snitch to him because like I want you to survive out here. Like I don't I may not want to be with you, but I don't want you to be off the earth. So, you know, I probably wouldn't tell him, but he had ways of finding out things because that's just the type of dad he is. That's his parents in general. So, you know, annoying. so I think he dealt with a lot of that. Um 
my my birth dad is super intelligent. Graduated high school at 15. That's part of his problem. Um, he gets bored very easily because he's so smart. Um, so I think that's why things have happened in his life. Um, he's read quite a lot. A lot of the things that I've read in life, like really intense books and things, were things that he recommended to me. So like having real conversations with him as an adult, yeah, like I could totally do that. But like would I trust him with my feelings or – invest my time in him or believe him when he says something? Absolutely not. No. And that's not a shade to him at the end of the day. As an individual person, like I said, super intelligent, super talented. He went to culinary school, is a chef. He um, has a degree in engineering. Like, he's a, he's a well-rounded person. He's traveled. He was in the military. He served his country. As so there, there are several great qualities about him. But, you like, I, I look at it this way. Like, people only get to hurt you as long as you let them hurt you. And I got to a certain place and point in my life where if he called me tomorrow I would answer the phone we could have a conversation I wish him no ill will but I don't look for him in my life anymore and I I don't miss him which is honestly sad because we were so close when I was a child and I like days like I I want I gotta go to bed but mom I want to talk to dad now can you please call him like that was the kid I was with my dad and now like I can go months, even a year, without speaking to him, particularly after my grandmother passed away. Like, I'll send him a message, you know, for the holidays or Veterans Day or things like that. If he responds, he responds. If he doesn't, he doesn't. I've learned just not to let it hurt me anymore. Just a better person than me. So, <laughs> no, that took that. a lot of growth. And like I said, a lot of money because I went to therapy. So, this is not a diss or anything, but I always tell me and Janelle have conversations all the time. And Janelle said this before. She she's like what? a nigga. Oh, yeah. oh I was trying to figure out where he was going to. Yeah, I was about to be like, excuse like, me, because he said this is not a diss, and I was like, yeah, he go come nah, for my best friend again. Said, nah, 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 we had conversations. She be like, yo, I'm. Uh, she's like a nigga now, so her feelings is like. I think that's just the that's the shell that Janelle puts forth. I gotta trust you in my feelings. Yeah, at the end of I know the day. Janelle's soft in the middle. She, oh, All right, don't up. say it like that. But I'm just saying. Oh my god, y'all Tuh. niggas just crazy. even Joy made a face. Shout Tuh. out to Joy in the background. Not our best friend Joy, but our, uh, hey, our engineer, our engineer hey, yo, Joy. Joy. She's Joy soft had in the to middle. make a face because that didn't sound Tuh. right. Joy, she a part tub. Okay, okay, part-tub. please stop talking about my best friend like this. <laughs> that is you. terrible. Management. And you again, are definitely spreading. Propaganda. But, Thank no. you. No. Janelle's an amazing person, but you that's know, fact. Thank you. If, if she cares about you, you will know because she'll show it. Uh, I've seen Janelle show emotion sometimes, and then she could be hard when she wants to. She could be one of the niggas. Like she'll treat. I you. don't think that makes you one of the the guys, no, though. No, I think no, it, I've seen. I mean, I only say that because um, <laughs> growing up, I always gravitated more to hanging out with guys. Like, but my, like, taking out my love of wrestling because that, I think, intensified everything. And it was just like, oh, you know, she. You a girl and you watch wrestling? You, you got a girl? Donkey? Oh, shit. Relax. Again, I'm relax. Stop talking First about all, my best friend <laughs> like that. Yo. Do not spread propaganda. Thank you, you. Oh. Excuse me, your butt is not big. That's okay. No, and it's not about me and my butt, so oh, be quiet. Oh, I'm just saying because guys, they, first of all, us men is is hard is relatively hard when we you know we don't necessarily know that women like wrestling so I'm not saying you're an ugly person you're no, a very beautiful you. person I appreciate that so, thank you so much so when they see you they like oh okay like I want to talk to her and then they you know most men they that that's in the wrestling they be like oh she like wrestling oh shit like when I first met you we had a conversation about wrestling no we had a conversation about a status you put up and then um it, it bit off into wrestling and then it wound up making a drinking bet and I fucking lost like, <laughs> <laughs> everyone then, loses yeah, don't, don't bet against my friend everyone loses but, but no I mean like I said I think growing up like I was always gravitated more to the guys like doing like pl- recess I would, pl- I would play fucking handball all type of guy like That's guy stuff like, well yeah but um even takes one even in one. real even in real life time my girl in a circle is super duper small and it's because of you know growing up you know me and my mom we're, we're, we're velcro but once again, I've always been the one that when my feelings, they're in a lockbox. And 
I don't really talk about that stuff because not a, not that it's a sign of weakness, but that I just don't like people being concerned for me because I'm just always concerned for them. She makes me so crazy with that because <laughs> she does it to me still. And, they, and yeah, and even even my best friends had to like low key intervention me. Low key, you down they like shorty. Smooth, they this tricked is not me. gonna fly. These these hoes tricked me. Don't call me a hoe. I love you. <laughs> she not no hoe. I'm probably more hoe. She is. My. Yeah. Anyway. Do you want to speak louder for the class? You want to stop nah. talking about my best friend? Like <laughs> I she can speak about that. herself. You don't need to comment. <laughs> She's an adult. Speak Thanks. it to the mic, Caroline. Uh, <laughs> the mic is the mic is on. <laughs> uh, but um, but yeah, no. I mean, it all goes back to trusting your feelings with somebody and and feeling protected and and it goes back to why you know growing up, you know, like I said, my household was never crazy. It was never like dysfunctional like it was a well oil machine low key which is why people when when you know you tell these stories people look at you like wait what that happened that's real are you kidding me is because you not so much you want to have this facade but you just don't you know not not everything is is for public display either like certain things are just you know should stay in house and that really is across the board in anything in your life some things are just you know should be between you and the person and like I said, I think now the older I've gotten, you know, we haven't, you know, that's why I always say Brittany's a better person than I am because if this man is not calling me about my grandmother or in, or any of that, I, we have nothing to talk about. Because Are you going to pick up the phone? I probably wouldn't have probably then if I saw him call, I'd probably let that shit ring and, and then, then I'd probably him. text him and be like, <laughs> What up though? Sound like Janelle. <laughs> I'm not a phone. I mean she'll like talk on the phone. I, I don't. Do. <laughs> if you ain't got an appointment with her or you uh, My <laughs> office hours. Although she it's from my nine calls, to so five. I don't have those problems. So if you calling me after five o'clock, we ain't got nothing to really talk I'll just about. wait for Janelle to hit me up. She always hit me up like you alive and I'll be like, Yeah, what's up? You wanna yeah. get some hookah or something? Like that's, that's Stop always, stop like, encouraging the level like, of hookah consumption. Like, first of all, she encourages back. it herself. She first of all, we're not gonna talk about me like I'm not sitting in this goddamn room. <laughs> Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just saying, you know how I feel. We could we could But do you do have less. any other questions? questions? I do, I do. So, so come um, roll them out, because you know we on the time. No, we got mad time, B. We don't have mad time. We got mad time. Anyway. Seriously? Sir, we're going to pause the podcast for you. Like, you just want to... Rude nigga in the back. Play um, <laughs> um, I love my other best friend. But, he's, uh, he's in the building. <laughs> so, Although, so, fairness, he is uploading part one. So make sure you check it, that out on in, Facebook. In sense of, I didn't get to ask you this on part one. Okay. Um, so, like, you, like, personal-wise, like, did you... Like talk to your father about anything? Was there like like growing up? Like no. you said, like y'all didn't really. He was no. just the, the nigga in the living room. It's you a blanket. Body. No, you, you don't the need third, to. You the third child. No, but it wasn't because I don't know. I just never. We didn't have that relationship. And and honestly speaking, me and my mom don't have that relationship either. <laughs> like I don't really. You know, like I told you, I don't really talk about my feelings. It's never really been. Janelle's She's not motto. lying when she says that we. Did an intervention. No, no, that's the truth. It was almost like, yo, you gonna tell us these feelings or not? Literally called me up to the Bronx and was on some like, I'm thinking we all gonna hang out and do some some best friend shit. No, we gonna all sit in this room and you gonna tell us how you feel and you gonna tell us what's up. And I'm like, oh god. And once again, you know, with you know, we're growing and maturity and you know, aging a little bit. You know, because I'm not old, just seasoned. Um, (laughs) You just. You understand the necessity in terms of a relationship, whether it's a relationship with a guy or a relationship with, with, you know, friends and, you know, things like that. And you need to have that ability to ha- – there needs to be a sense of vulnerability and a sense of trust. And, you know, in my mind at the time, I was just like, you know, we're, we're, we're girls, we're sisters, don't worry about it, like, it's fine. But not realizing that I'm taking away the ability for them to be closer to me. And that that goes across the board. Like even if I'm dealing with somebody, and I'm not showing a certain side of myself, I'm I'm taking away that ability for you to get closer to me. And it's more of a defense mechanism, probably more than anything. Oh, very much. But it it doesn't it it still doesn't it cre- it's that's an excuse. I like to say that like Janelle and I are two sides of the same coin. We're very protective of the people that we care about. We're very caring about other people, but we don't like people to worry about us. At all. 
Um, but I I ain't got no choice now. Yeah, no, you ain't <laughs> got no options. I ain't got no options, way. But no. um, but to your question, once again, I didn't have actually, and it wasn't even just with my dad. Both both parents, I didn't have that type of relationship where I felt like I can tell you about oh this this is the guy that my first guy that I kissed or this is the guy that I like like I had one side that was telling me I wasn't good enough and then the other side was telling me well you got shit to do you gotta go to college you gotta do this you gotta get a job like you ain't got time to be worried about these men these boys even to this day my mama to this day is on something like you ain't got you shouldn't be worried about that like you still got a lot to go, lot to do you know you should go back to school go get your masters you could do this do that and it's like girl and Nadine is fifty fifty she's like go <laughs> it's ahead, like get girl your and and it's and and it and it actually I felt like now looking at it I feel like it hinders me sometimes because it's like I, from both sides of the fence I don't have a I never had like the blueprint in terms of how to handle. <laughs> certain situations because I we A never talked about it and B was it was never encouraged. It was like it's like you know when you in a, you, like you learn want to learn how to swim and your parent don't know how to how to swim and they be like they just throw your little ass in the pool and be like figure it out. It was like, so it was oh God, what, what show was that? He was like, <laughs> you know how to swim yet? Yeah? He's like, no how old are you five? <laughs> but that's honestly that's that's sometimes how I how I felt growing up was just like Oof, figure it out like because it, i had one parent that was always like you know she she wanted me to focus on other things and which is great you know once again love my mom i'm appreciative of her keeping me on that straight and narrow path because we've seen people who that had started off straight and then, you know off the, <laughs> table, off the whole off table the um and then but then i have the other parent you know in a sense, making me feel like I'm never going to have those type of experiences or I'm never going to, you know, feel loved or, or feel protected or, or feel like I'm good enough or, you know, all, all it's like it's it's like two negatives go, just doing this and it, it's not going anywhere. So and it's once again, and it's not a shade to neither one of my parentals because I am the, who I am today because of them. Good, bad or indifferent. Oh, that's a good gospel song. Yeah. Good, bad, or indifferent, I am super thankful of. And I went, I look back, I would never change anything. Oh, me neither. Would never change anything. Which sounds crazy. Yeah, which is wild because. But it's true. I think looking, you know, especially listening to the first episode and now listening to this, it's like, you know, but wouldn't you want, you know, your father to be active? And it's just like, I don't think I would have the, the grittiness that I have if I was if I was a daddy's little girl, I don't think I would have the grittiness. And it's not a shades of brick because she is a daddy's girl, but there is a bit of a different type of grittiness that she has that I have. But I don't think the like the nigga mentality that I have, I don't think I would have if I was a daddy's little girl. That's true. So hostile ass nigga. I'm okay. not always hostile. You, you know, someone else told me that. Friend they called you hostile. Yeah, somebody from the seven seven three called me that the other day. They said, "Why are you always so Here hostile with area me?" Codes. Did you two give me a Chicago area? I sure did. So speaking did. of Chicago We're not, area, though. Oh We're talking my. about that. Actually, Stay I got to focus. Oh. So the last episode, somebody heard the last episode. Read that text. <laughs> oh, have a good day. Have a good show, I'm sorry. And tell my boy, <laughs> yo, he spelled my name wrong. <laughs> Tell him that. That's your greatest concern. He said He said it in his voice? No, in your voice. Oh, he wants me to say it in my voice. What yeah. the fuck is with my voice that? <laughs> <laughs> like, he said... Still out here perpetrating. Like what you up, got what up Q? What place. up, Q? Thank you for listening to the podcast all the way from <laughs> Chicago. Um, I appreciate you listening to the other episode. I feel like you did that because you know Janelle was going it. <laughs> Thank you, no, I sent, I had sent the, I sent the episode to a few people just... One to just support, you know, Cats and Dogs. Shout out to Cats and Dogs. I appreciate it. Um, but then also too because I was on it and because I wanted them to understand certain things and I feel like you, that they, Yeah, they, that I mean that they could have had the opportunity to but didn't take the time and the effort and the willingness to. So Oh, so how did he feel when he heard that? What 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 did he say to you? No, the backlash is- I got was basically like, I didn't know that about you. Like you never told me those things and it was just like why do I have to do no. this on a podcast? Wait. Yeah, no, that uh, was it. Like, why? And it's like, but you didn't take the real time to ask those questions. And, you know, and it, and it wasn't even so much. And I had to tell him. I was like, but there were things that you knew, too. So let's not even, we're not going to do that. So. I mean, it was, it was, it was great. Um, 
Britt, how was how was like your high school and teens growing up? With <laughs> Don't laugh like that. You supposed to keep my stuff. No, rest. but I'm just saying. When he said high school, I was just like, I had got the flashback of four years. Like, man, that was some good times. I mean, I like I said, my family. You know, I was raised in the church. They're sort of conservative, so I wasn't like super crazy in she high wasn't. school. I can I can attest to that. Or in college, um, I had the same boyfriend, uh, pretty much. Uh, throughout that experience um so you know i was not really out there but i think i think oh, what sorry. high school and college dating and even my dad's in general taught me more than anything was like no one person is perfect i don't think i'm perfect i don't think anybody you end up with is perfect but you have to like choose the qualities that you're looking for and then decide on the things that you won't compromise on and like all of those, I think all of those things have created the person that I am now and the perspectives that I have now. Um, and I think my dad's very heavily influenced that, the both of them, because even though, you know, like I said, I'd have no ill will to him, um, but my birth dad, like there are qualities in him that I would want in the person that I spend the rest of my life with that I end up with, but there are a lot of qualities I wouldn't. And even my dad, who my second dad, I love him. There is nothing on this earth that I would not do for this man. There are qualities in him that I absolutely want the person that I end up with to have. And there are qualities that I would not. So I think that you just have to kind of, you know, make your list like saying and check it twice. You know, like just be sure about what you bring to the table and what you're asking for and make sure that th those things match and like that's how you grow because in high school like I was just like the girl that was like so ready to date and be in love and like all this like I just thought I was gonna be you know you was ready to date girl <laughs> shut up <laughs> No shame. So what you're not going to do <laughs> is come for my guest host right here. That's what you're not going to do. We're not going to come for my guest host. No, but like seriously, I was like. <laughs> the, 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 the in love part, yes. No, I, when I, I say I was ready to date, I meant like I was ready to date one person. Like, stop, oh, stop. Get your life together, would you stop girl. <laughs> y'all, like, y'all, baby, look. I'm just like, if, what's you, going on? if you had been on time. That's that's what you could have. Uh, mm -hmm. We over here. Mm -hmm. We over here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen, my friend loves to look, and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying, looking is a great thing. It's a great thing. Everyone has. Because if you don't look, you're never gonna. You know, you never. You know, yeah. satisfaction brought him back. No, that's but the expression. look. <laughs> I don't agree with it, but that is the expression. But looking <laughs> keeps you aware of what your surroundings, you, what you want. That's true. Oh, Period. Because yeah. I used to not look. She's not wrong there. You used to not look at all. At all, she was Stevie Wonder in this bitch. I was. I was blind to everything. Like because you know, I think like the the person you hear talking to you now has evolved. Whew, thank God for therapy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank God for church. Thank Hallelujah. God for the Lord. But honestly, like the person that I was like after the experiences that I had, particularly with my birth dad, because I was so close to him and like the different things. Like honestly, when I was in college, him getting married on my birthday and forgetting it was my birthday, like was like was probably like almost rock bottom for he, us he forgot your birthday can you elaborate on that story please so he's done that a few times the first time i think i was birthday? turning 18 no, and he no, called no. me <laughs> he called me on my 18th birthday and i'm thinking he's calling me to wish me happy birthday and he's like just checking in and he was and like we were on the phone like maybe five minutes and i'm like why is he waiting to wish me happy birthday and then he goes all right well i gotta run but i just wanted to make sure i called you and reminded you to call brandon because you know he's turning 21 yeah. um in 10 days because my brother and i i was i was turning 18 my brother my oldest no well, not my oldest brother but his oldest son was turning 21 so it was my 18th birthday it was going to be my brother's 21st birthday i was born on april um 11th birthday? and he was born on april 21st so we're 10 days like you know years and 10 days apart and it was just like i hung up the phone and i remember looking at my mom and she was like what's wrong and i started crying and she asked me, like, she's like, what happened? And I told her what happened, and she lost it. That was, you know, she was saved, but she wasn't Holy Ghost filled in. So she had some words with him. But that was, like, the first time. He had, like, missed birthdays before calling, but that was, like, the first time that it was, like, you called me and couldn't even remember. And then two years later, I'm in college, sophomore year. Um, or was it freshman year? I don't even remember which. But in college, and, you know, my grandmother's like, oh, you got to get your stuff. Like, I'm going to help you get your stuff. Your dad's getting married. These are the colors that he wants you to wear. And I'm like, what's the date? And she's like, you know, I don't know yet, but let's, like, get our stuff together. It's going to be in the spring. And the week 
uh, two weeks before, my grandmother's like, okay, so I bought your ticket, but um, I want to have a conversation with you. And I'm like, well, what do you want to talk about, Grandma? And she's like, um, so I, you know, I honestly think he didn't realize this, which sounds even worse, but your dad and Cheryl chose their date. Like, they knew it was going to be in April. They had, like, set it for April, but they didn't have a date. So I was going to spend the week with my grandmother, partially to celebrate my birthday, and at some point they would be getting married. So the assumption was... It would be around my birthday, but not on my actual birthday. So they got married on your actual birthday? They got married on my actual birthday. And my dad, my grandmother, when I got there, like, she had a card for me. She had a cake. And my dad was like, oh, um, yeah, you know, like, it's a lot of stuff going on with the wedding. I was going to, like, pay to get your nails done, like, as a treat. for, But, like, you know, it's stuff happening. So, like, I'll just send you some money later. And I went to, my grandmother had got a hotel room because the house that she had in South Carolina where they live, Um, was too far from, like, she didn't live in the city. Like, my family owns a lot of land, but it's, like, an hour and a half outside of Charleston. So she didn't want to be that far from the wedding. So she had a hotel. So I stayed in a hotel with her, and we went out to dinner, and she had a cake made for me, like, from a bakery, and she brought it. And we ate dinner, and we had the cake. My dad was in the same city 10 minutes from us, did not come to the dinner, did not have the cake with us, did not give me a card, did not say anything, and then had the MC shout me out at their reception. For my birthday, listen. And, if they didn't shout you out during that uh, all that during that, that dinner, was, oh, and that was the God. expense of, and that was like a that was like a, a breaking point and a turning point for us and for like my because even till then, like with everything that had happened between us and things that choices that he had made, like when he moved to South Carolina and didn't speak for, to me for three years, like all kinds of things that had happened up until that point, I was still like that's my dad like we still have great memories like I was holding on to those things and at that point I I kind of fell back and I started there was a lot of other stuff going on in my relationship at the time and like losses that I experienced there and then I had to leave college and like all of these things happened and I had like a break and I kind of shut down and after that after going to therapy and like going back to church and like really figuring out you know who I was separate from being my birth dad's daughter or my dad my second dad's daughter or my mom's daughter because honestly that had a lot of expectations on it or my grandmother's granddaughter you know who's a minister and you know she's well spoken and is she gonna go into the church and like all of everyone else's expectations I kind of made my own choices and one of those was to treat my parents like people and not like these perfect people that are supposed to always support me and always be certain things to me. Does my mom do that? Absolutely. Does my second dad do that in his own way? Absolutely. And no shade on that. Like he he's not the type of man that's going to sit there and like talk to you for hours or write his feelings down, but you're going to know that he loves you. You're Sounds going like a to know that yeah. Mm. But he's a Taurus. So Oh, my mom's a Taurus. But he's like a Taurus. Too. But like <laughs> and my birth dad, you know, at the end of the day, I think he does love me. I think he always will. But I just think that, you know, we are different people and we'll always be different people. And I'm grateful that him and my mom met, got married, and that I exist in the world. And I'll always be grateful for that. Um, And, you know, hopefully he'll be great in life and so will I. This is why she's a better person than I am. (laughs) (laughs) The moral of the story. (laughs) I keep telling y'all, go to church, go to therapy, live your best lives. But maybe see if your insurance covers it. Push the church thing, but therapy definitely, I think. Both worked for me, but whichever works for you, just just try it. Sit with somebody and just talk. It helps. Or do a podcast. That's a fact. (laughs) (laughs) I always tell people doing it. I didn't realize how therapeutic... um, you know, and I hate public speaking. Actually, it's the worst thing in the I'm world. I'm so proud of you, by the way. Can I just say that out loud? These last two episodes? Oh, thank you. You're, like, really in touch. I try because, and it's so funny because old boy had asked me, like, oh, why did you do the podcast? Like, what made you do the podcast? Chicago, kind of thing. actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chicago, and when said, you coming back to New York, man. Don't no, come. Never. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I told you, I'm super so, protective. So That's some nigga shit. You <laughs> can fall. <laughs> How is that so Is it true? I'm, I'm such the nice guy. Watch, but I'm going to send him the link again, and I'm going to tell him the specific time to hear this question. And then he's gonna he's gonna answer. He's gonna say no, never. And I'm and I'm telling you what he's gonna say. Wow, yeah. and that's great. And that's wow. fine. No, that's fine. I told you I'm super protective. That's super fine. Just like as I am of my friends. Yeah. So people need to get their shit together. Oh, yeah. And he's not gonna get his together. So let's move on. Making a list, <laughs> checking it twice. <laughs> what? Too much? Too much? Yeah, okay. Too much? Just enough. Just enough. All right. <clears throat> oh, 
Just enough. I think that was good. But um, how was your morning today, though? Speaking of, I'm sorry, though. Know. I didn't get breakfast, so I guess my morning was, you know, pretty simple. Aren't we going to brunch? Yeah, shout out to brunch. All right, then. Because <laughs> I didn't really eat breakfast either. Oh, damn. What you did? I know somebody at this table did eat some breakfast. Shit. <laughs> you wouldn't have got shit. Like I lucky she didn't. I had like eggs and strawberries. Lucky she didn't poison your shit because that's exactly probably whatever. You would have been on the toilet all day. <laughs> Teach you oh, a whole lesson. <laughs> awkward. It's not awkward. It's the truth. I mean, being on the toilet all day is awkward. No, it's not. It's, <laughs> it's the you're, truth. You're like everything. <laughs> drop, a cup your pan, drop a cup. Your circulation. Nah, your circulation <laughs> goes out. Like I don't think anyone yeah, wants I, to stay in the bathroom. Take a break. Day. I gotta go to work later. What you mean? <laughs> you are gonna be shitting the work too. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Anyway, any other questions you have? So we um, one, one last question before we wrap it up. Shit. <laughs> to both parties. That's hilarious though. <laughs> all right. So um, I don't know. I really can't think of nothing. Is there anything I want to close out with? Uh. Before I do the wrap up, um, I don't know, Britt, you want to go first? I don't know. Um, I just want to thank you for having me, Tati, as well. Ironically, we were talking about this last week. She's actually spending time with her dad today, so shout outs to oh. that, making you know connections with the people that you love or that, that you know birthed that you, was whichever. Oh, shit. Was for that. Sorry. <laughs> But um, I just want to thank the Cats and Dogs podcast for having me. It was fun. Uh, I had to choose my episode carefully because sometimes, you know, your topics be a little extra. So. You don't like getting donkey punched? No one likes getting donkey punched. Do you like getting, getting donkey, donkey punched? punched? The fuck? Except Tati. You and I just want to say this on record for the rest of the women in the world. Also, most of us probably don't want our mouths spitting. Don't listen to Tati on that one either. Thanks. <laughs> Look, you know, disgusted our engineers. Just wanted to put that out there else? publicly because they say that a lot. Um, as again, thank you um, to Tati, um, Lawrence, and of course, Amanda, who doesn't like to get shouted out, but I'm going to shout you out on purpose. Because yes. she's so amazing. It. Because you are a part of this podcast, ma'am. But tell her um, that keep telling her that. Um, and also keep trying to communicate. Please and thank you. Um, but um, I do want to thank you guys um, for also shedding light and also giving, you know, us a safe space to have these kind of conversations. I think it's important. Very much so. <laughs> No plug intended. Uh, I think it's super important um, to, you know, have awareness. And once again, um, you're in a place in your life where you can you can have these conversations and not be afraid of, you know, what he says, she said, or, or anything like that. You know what I mean? Like, I think it's important to, you know, cherish the relationships that you have with people um, and also take the time to understand why the person is the way that they are um, because you don't, once again, know their story. And I think it's important to shed light on certain parts of our lives so that people can have a better understanding of who you are um, as a person. So I do, once again, want to thank Cats and Dogs for allowing, you know, not only me, but I get to do an episode with my best friend, <laughs> one of my best friends. So that's pretty, I mean, every week I do an episode of the Shop Tapes podcast with one of my best friends. So <laughs> it's okay. But to do it with um, one of my best friends for over 15 years, it's super, this, this episode is going to mean a lot to me in the years to come. So thank me you guys well. for giving us that opportunity. Um, and then cheap plug um, once again you can follow um, not only cats and dogs um, also toxic talk if it does come back um, and your sports, um, your sports huh? on the Jabba Tears podcast network and then also to Jabba Tears podcast um, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube all of that jazz um, we're going to be you know doing our first ever um, wrestling show with Battle Club Pro and I'm going to be plugging it until the day that it happens because Ooh, July, 4th. July 4th means a lot to um, all of us um, because we've worked our asses off. So um, please come out to make sure you support um, support independent wrestling um, and then also once again support other podcasts. So that's, um, um, that's all I have to aren't say. Aren't you guys having an event tomorrow night? Uh, yeah, but by the time, but by this, the time airs, this airs, it's, it's, it's irrelevant, so, uh, unfortunately. Like I, I want to thank everybody for the love and support for the uh, for, for Cats and Dogs, also Jabba Tears Network. I want to thank you guys for even giving us a platform to uh, – even uh, voice, uh, give us our, our voice out to the world. And, voice you know. of the voiceless. <laughs> I want to thank Alexandria uh, 
for coming on the There's episode. There's that voice drop. Yeah. Talking oh, about it again. yeah. You, what? you was a funny. You was a funny. Yo, Even the, Joy, our engineer, she looked name? back like, weird. what was it? He oh. keeps saying it's just one voice. I just want to oh. point out that was a whole different voice. Thank you for I want to thank Alexandria. Yo, stop playing with me, baby. There it is. There it is again. Did you hear it? That's his radio voice. Can you wrap this up now? Smooth R and B. My new point seven. Kiss that shit. Kissing after dark. Anyway, if you need a radio thank man, you, thank that's you. that guy. I want to thank Janelle from HR from the Job of Tears podcast for coming out and being on a part two. Like I said, Alexandria, thank you. Uh, I want to thank the Job of Tears for giving Cats and Dogs the platform to actually do this and do it every week. Um, like I, like Janelle said, uh, follow Cats and Dogs on, uh, on Instagram. You got Job of Tears podcast on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Would you like to plug your Instagram or you don't want people? Absolutely not. You okay. guys have a great one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so shout out to Tati that wasn't here. You know I helped it down for us. He uh, did. He did a good job. Woo! Even though you know uh, he out here engineer. smooth R and B. Shout out to the engineer in the back, Wilkins. Thank you. I appreciate everything. Uh, this is Mister Hit It with the Wee Wee, and we're gonna say we <laughs> out from cats and dogs. <laughs> Thank you. Did I want to plug my? <laughs>